We are in England on a river flood control dike in the surroundings of South Ferriby and we start to apply the quick testing measurement within the GMS. The apparatus we use is GEM2. This apparatus GEM2 is based on the method of dipole electromagnetic profiling. The monitored parameter is conductivity of the rock environment. The advantage of the apparatus GEM2 is a possibility of simultaneous measurement at several operating frequencies of the electromagnetic signal. This allows us to acquire the information from several depth levels. The aim of quick testing measurement is to describe most effectively and at the lowest possible cost the dye condition, its material composition and homogeneity. As you can see, the apparatus is compact, simple, lightweight, approximately 4 kilograms. Basically, the measurement proceeds as follows. The apparatus is to be placed on the shoulder and held in a horizontal stabilized position. The measurement itself proceeds at a walk speed. To control the apparatus is very simple. Here is a small display allowing the basic control of the apparatus functions connectors for connecting to PC, to download the measured data and a connector to connect with GPS, master switch, connector for recharging, battery status indicator, connector connection with the GPS system, connector connection with the computer, three basic control push buttons to move in the menu and enter. The measurement has to be assisted by one more person who, with regard to the fact that the measurement proceeds very quickly, comments the points laid out by the measuring expert, records remarks, makes photographic documentation of the measured profile. Mark, iron. As there frequently occur pseudo-anomalies due to the presence of various metallic materials on the dike, these materials have to be documented to allow their elimination from the measured data. The operator who performs the measurement using GEM2 must not have on any iron things, such as watch, mobile phone, etc. I hand over my watch. I mount the GPS. GPS is placed on a simple frame to allow only minimum effects on the measuring apparatus. The main advantage of quick testing measurement using the apparatus GM2 is high productivity of the measurement and favorable measurement cost acquired information ratio. I mark the beginning of the profile and am ready to start to measure the prepared dike segment. In this way, the basic information on changes of the dike properties in both horizontal and vertical directions can be acquired. Repeated measurement by the apparatus GM2 within the geophysical monitoring system further allows to earmark the dike segments unstable in time. This can be exploited in detecting and monitoring the dynamics of the sea pages. The next phase of the geophysical monitoring system on the dikes is the diagnostic measurement based on resistivity tomography. In this measurement, Czech experts measure disturbed, inhomogeneous dike segments and get information in more detail on the location of hidden defects. Just now the preparation for detailed measurement using the method of resistivity tomography is underway. It is a method examining flood control dikes, also on the principle of the dike resistivity composition and the dike material composition. Nevertheless, it exploits the principle of four electrode resistivity sounding, and the result of this method is basically a vertical cross section or three dimension model through the dike body and subsoil. The principle of the method is as follows. We have a cable which is to be laid along the measured profile, electrodes connected to the cable and all is to be connected to the apparatus, to the control unit which step by step switches on two electrodes as current electrodes and two electrodes as measuring ones. The distance between the electrodes ranges from half a meter to roughly five meters 
depending on the magnitude of the studied phenomena. Now we are at a new locality, so we enter a new heading. The apparatus enables us to measure in the format of cross-sections as well as three-dimension arrangement, where we construct the 3D model of the measured medium, where we move from the profile that is in cross-section. In performing the measurement on the dikes, we mostly use Schlumberger's array of electrodes. I connect the ARES apparatus for the measurement. Let me say that it is necessary to be particular about safety of measurement, because currents flowing through the cable may be dangerous to life, which means that during the measurement the operator has to take heed to the safety of employees and persons moving near the dike. So do not touch. Everything seems to be all right. And now we start the measurement itself, which is estimated to last about half an hour for this profile. Now we can see the course of the measurements. In the first line there appears the measured current values in milliamperes. In the second line the measured voltage value in millivolts. The third line shows the value of apparent resistivity. And the fourth line shows the measurement error. As this apparatus allows to stake the measurement and, in the main, it evaluates errors of the individual points, and in the case that the measured point is unstable or the error is too high, the apparatus discards such point from the data file. Acoustic signal finished the measurement. First we have to switch off safety push button, which disconnects the current circuit, then it is possible to finish dismounting and we can move over to another dike segment. We process the acquired data from earth flood control dikes using special software tools. Software tools serve for the interpretation of the acquired data and for their storage in the database. For quick testing measurement, we use a special software which allows to compare repeated measurements, specify unstable dike segments, and demarcate so-called quasi-homogeneous blocks. These are dike segments that show the same geomechanical properties and are built from the same materials. The information acquired from software serves the dike administrator, allowing to design further technical investigation and specify the scope of necessary dike repairs. Now let us demonstrate an example of evaluation of quick testing measurement, which was conducted using the apparatus GM2. In the top part we can see a set of diagrams showing the curves of resistivities or different depth levels of the dike body. The first step of the interpretation is the delimitation of segments where the measured data are affected or distorted by the existence of iron objects, such as fences, railings, sluices, etc. These effects are imaged here in the form of a broken line, which we use in further data processing. Through evaluation software, quasi-homogeneous blocks enter the database, where they can be seen on the map in the form of different color segments, characterizing different distribution of materials in the dike body. We also process the diagnostic measurements. Here are examples of resistivity tomography outputs, where we use specialized software. This software translates the measured data to resistivity cross-sections. So, for example, in this figure you can see a cross-section through the dike body, where the dike body is represented by these variegated colors and in subsoil, it is the blue color, the course of water seepage in dike subsoil is shown. The application of the geophysical measurements within the GMS markedly reduces the total costs of engineering geological investigation of the dikes. Exploratory drill holes and the sampling for the laboratory tests can be optimally situated into the interpreted quasi-homogeneous blocks or problematic segments. In this way, savings in the total length of the drill holes are achieved and, furthermore, point results acquired from drill holes and laboratory tests can, thanks to the continuous information from the geophysical measurements, be used for a description of the entire dike. 
Our experience gained in the application of the geophysical monitoring system on the Mississippi River, on earth flood control dikes in Humber Estuary in England, or on fish pond dikes in South Bohemia, shows that the GMS may become a highly effective tool of technical safety supervision for this type of water management structures.